So we only have two kids, you know? We'll pick our favorite, and that one will get to go to college. Friends is one of the most popular TV shows of all time. Ran for 10 seasons, and what makes it even more fun is there's actually a lot of really cool economic concepts within the series. And doing a YouTube series where every week, in, as part of the series, we're going to drop a video that examines an economic lesson that we find within the show. We're going to watch a clip from the show and then examine the lesson within. If you like this sort of content, please click like and subscribe where you'll get notified when new videos come out. Let's go to the clip where Chandler, Monica, and uh, Phoebe and Rachel a little bit as well discuss how much to spend on Chandler and Monica's wedding. Let's go to that right now. All right, so I haven't cleared the budget with my parents yet, mm -hmm. but tell me how this is for music. Okay. All right, um, a string quartet for the processional, oh. a jazz trio for cocktails, mm -hmm. the Bay City Rollers for dancing. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> that was for my sixth grade wedding. <laughs> okay, well, we're really excited about our wedding plans, and well, I guess pretty soon we'll be making a big withdrawal from the Monica wedding fund. <laughs> <laughs> What? You tell her, Jack, I can't do it. What happened? You still have the Monica wedding fund, don't you? We have it. Only now we call it the beach house. I can't believe you spent my wedding fund on the beach house. We're sorry, honey, but we just assumed if you got married after you turned 30, you'd pay for it yourself. You bought the beach house when I was 23. Which means you had seven years of beach fun and you can't put a price on that, sweetie. <laughs> I really do feel bad about this. <laughs> what, what happened at dinner? My parents spent the money for our wedding. <gasps> My God, what did you order? <laughs> Wait, there's no money? Well, this is terrible. Look, why don't you just pay for it yourself? How? I don't have any money. Well, I have some. How much? Well, close to... <laughs> Scenario A. Oh, really? How great are you, you little saver? <laughs> I mean, the, the amount you have is exactly the budget of my dream wedding. Oh, you guys are so made for each other. <laughs> well, you're not suggesting that we spend all of the money on the wedding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, I've been saving this money for six years, and I kind of had some of it earmarked for the future, not just for a party. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking. It's not fair for me to ask you to spend all of your money on our wedding. I mean, you work, you work really hard for that. Yeah. Well, you work for that. <laughs> Look, I thought about it too, and I'm sorry. I think we should spend all of the money on the wedding. You do? Yeah, I'm putting my foot down. <laughs> yeah, look. When I proposed, I told you that I would do anything to make you happy. And if having the perfect wedding makes you happy, then, then that's what we're going to do. <laughs> You're so sweet. What about the future and stuff? Ah, forget about the future and stuff. <laughs> so we only have two kids, you know? We'll pick our favorite, and that one will get to go to college. <laughs> about that? Yeah. How many kids were we going to have? Ah, uh, four. A boy, twin girls, and another boy. What else did you think about? Well, <laughs> stuff like where we'd live, you know, like a small place outside the city where our kids could learn to ride their bikes and stuff. And, you know, we could have a cat that had a bell on its collar and we could hear it every time it ran through the little kitty door. Of course, we'd have an apartment over the garage where Joey could grow old. You know what? I, I don't. I don't want a big fancy wedding. Sure you do. No. I want everything that you just said. I want a marriage. You sure? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, some fantastic scenes that were cut together from this season. And there's some really good economics in here. One of the key things that we try to get across in any economics course right at the beginning is the idea that there are trade-offs. So there are trade-offs between particular choices and when you're thinking about the trade-offs there's an opportunity cost. The opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative. It's the value of what you're giving up. Opportunity cost can be strictly in money, but oftentimes it's not strictly in money. And when it's in money, often the money really relates to something else. The money has other power to do something else. And here we see a pretty fascinating story. So Monica had her heart set on a dream wedding. Her parents had saved for it, but as we see, the parents spent that money. So now there is no outside source of funding to provide the wedding that Monica had always dreamed about. So that leaves a situation where they have to pay for it themselves. Monica finds out Chandler saved more than she had thought he had been saving and enough to really pay for the absolute dream wedding. But it comes at a cost. Well, of course it comes at a cost. We know it comes at a monetary cost. But Chandler lays out what the cost is in pretty harsh detail, right? One of great quote is, so we'll only have two kids, we'll pick our favorite, and that one gets to go to college, right? I mean, if you're talking a wedding in New York, right? I mean, you could be talking a $100,000 wedding. That money that goes into uh, 529 accounts for children could really go a long way towards funding a lot of a college education. You know, if, doesn't even need all of that. If a good portion of that goes and then can compound over a number of years, it goes a long way. Also was dreaming a little bit, you know, Chandler was kind of dreaming, okay, we could do the wedding or we could have you know, this fantastic house, this fantastic life. And it might be a little dramatic as they could certainly do a wedding and have a good life after, but, you know, weddings that are expensive do provide a very real set of trade-offs to examine. If you're paying for it by yourself, what is the value of going on that particular wedding versus all of the other things that you can do with the money? So it's a really nice example of both the trade-offs that are involved and eventually Monica kind of comes over to where Chandler, what, what Chandler was thinking and thinking, no, I don't want that wedding given here's the other things we could do with that money. Trade-offs were too much. The opportunity cost was too high. When Monica had to pay for the wedding herself, or her and Chandler have to pay for it, which is now their joint budget, all of a sudden, it, it's pretty costly. You have to factor in the opportunity costs that really weren't there if the parents were paying for it the opportunity cost of giving up all of the other things that they could do in life with that money was simply too much. Hope you enjoyed this uh, short clip from Friends and our little analysis of the economics behind it. We've got a series that will be releasing a new episode every week where we examine the economic issues within. So please subscribe. I, if you enjoyed the video, please like it. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.